Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how the new video sequence works in Google Ads. They've just introduced a new feature, which I think will be beneficial for those brands that are looking to tell a story using video. Um, so let's dive in and let's have a look. Yes, yeah, so I'm in, I'm in the, the um, YouTube account that uh, I wanted to kind of run this through. Uh, effectively, what, what, what we're able to do is we're able to give the campaign a name. You can choose whether you want to run a daily budget or if you'd prefer, you can actually have a um, like a, a total budget, campaign total. Um, so it's entirely up to you. So again, if it was a particular campaign that you wanted to run for a period of time, then you could kind of choose whether you wanted to just have a fixed budget on it. Um, in terms of bidding strategies, you have two options. You can either do target CPM or maximum CPV. We're actually finding that there's there's actually quite a lot of success that we're having with target CPM. Um, depending on whether you're going for tier one countries, which would be the likes of the US, UK, Canada, Australia, and so on, um, you, you probably would have to have a higher CPM. So quite, quite often what we do is we might create a campaign, replicate it, and then obviously have a different uh, bid strategy for um, CPMs or CPVs for uh, tier two countries. So Again, it, it's entirely up to you whether you want to isolate UK, US, Canada, have one one campaign for each, or you might put them all together and just have like um, one separate for um, tier two countries. Um, so in terms of networks, this particular type of campaign, uh, you can only run it for YouTube videos. You can't run it on the partners on the display network or YouTube search results. It's not designed for that. Um, for languages, again, you can kind of choose which languages you want to have. Um, I tend to kind of just choose English. I know a lot of uh, PPC people would say, you know, just run it to all languages, so then whichever language people are on. But I only run uh, campaigns uh, for myself in English, so it would make sense to only kind of run it on English. And that, that way I'm not going to give people that don't have English as their first language as, as a, a kind of good user experience. For me, I think if somebody has taken the time to actually change their um, language settings to make it Spanish or Portuguese or whatever it might be, um, then there's every likelihood that um, their English is not that strong. Um, in terms of locations, you can choose countries or, or cities. So in this case, I'm going to just tar target the UK, um, and that's reflected in the, the name of the campaign. So again, typically as a best practice, I would always put the, the countries that I'm targeting at the beginning of the campaign, uh, but I would also use labels further down the line once we actually get the campaign built to um, enable us to do that. So in this case, I'm obviously running a campaign it's UK. It's for my growth agency and it's an ad sequence. Um, what you could do if you also wanted, like there's, there's something for a little bit further down. So you can see the demographics here. I've, I've opted to kind of uh, opt out of the 18 to 24 and 65 plus age ranges. That's not to say I wouldn't get conversions there. I just think it's from a cost effectiveness perspective, you know, they're less likely to be in the wheelhouse of the, the people that would be the decision makers for me. Uh, so when it comes to like ideas, I mean, you have like three in terms of audience creation, you've got various ways in which you can do this. So you can either search for an audience, one that you've already created yourself. Um, you can browse for an audience uh, and that will give you uh, just again, like you can, you can kind of create your own or you can kind of, um, you know, choose custom affinity audiences or something like that, and then uh, Google themselves will give you some ideas. So in, in, in my case, they'll, they'll analyze based on my YouTube channel, the types of people that I would be engaged with. So that could be social media enthusiasts, technophiles and retirement planning. Not quite sure why retirement planning, but there we go. Um, and then obviously we've got stuff that's similar to my selection. So in the case of this, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for people that are interested in, in, in um, you know, like growth for their business and primarily people that would be good prospects, good fits for my business. Um, so I'm looking for people where there's an enterprise software solution or CRM solution. And, you know, if you look, you can see the size of audience is probably 100 to 500 million a week impressions. Now, given that the population of the UK is only 60 million and probably only, I would say, maybe a third of those are um, of the right sort of age group now that I've eliminated 18 to 24 and 65 plus. I think we really need to take that impression volume with a little bit of a pinch of salt. Uh, but anyway, that's that's what they're suggesting. So I'll, I'll kind of go with that. Uh, the way I can, can control what goes on is I can have that obviously, obviously on the daily budget, uh, but I can also kind of reduce the the, uh, the 
exposure using the, the bids that I have. Um, then, then we have kind of content exclusions. So again, from the point of view of um, you know understanding the types of inventory that, that YouTube has available. So they have three inventory types and the recommended one is always what they call standard inventory. Um, and in terms of standard inventory, um, it, they say it's kind of content that's appropriate for most brands and it probably is. Um, but there are some things that, that you know, you, if you're uh, a sensitive brand, you may not want to have your um, video shown on, on um, you know, a, a channels that, that have, you know, certain things. So in, in terms of, you know, if you have somebody that swears a lot, strong profanity, then you might say, well, I don't want to show on those, um, you, you know, where it's strong sexual content, discussions of sex, uh, or it epitomizes or dramatizes violence. You can say, right, I don't want to be shown for that. So you could choose limited inventory. So it'll be just moderate profanity, moderate the uh, moderate sexually suggested content. So um, again, I, I would probably suggest if you're worried about it, go with limited inventory. If you're not worried about it, go with standard inventory. Um, and you can see in my account, it's actually, um, you know, you can actually switch, switch it on or off at the account setting and I've actually switched it off. So I wouldn't want ever to kind of have my, um, my video shown where there's ex excessive profanity, which might mean that I'll never show on Gary V's page, but hey, I'll, I'll kind of live with that. Um, then you have excluded content. So again, in, in terms of the types of content you may want to kind of opt out from, your ads showing. So you've got tragedy and conflict, sensitive social issues, um, and then there's, there's, there's a few others. So again, by default, I always kind of have those off. Um, again, my, my content is primarily designed for adults. So generally speaking, I'm, I know that obviously some adults will play games, but generally I don't want my, my ads to show on gamers channels. Um, and I also don't want to kind of have my ads showing on content where Google, ha uh, yeah, Google, YouTube haven't had the opportunity to label the audience to understand kind of who it's for. So in, in my case, like I'll say, okay, anything else is okay, but I just don't want it to be on, on sites that haven't been labeled. And clearly from the point of view of, you know, the, the number of new publishers that appear on, on uh, new channels that appear on YouTube, you know, there's there's probably tens of thousands on a daily basis, and we're not going to show for those. But in all honesty, I'm quite I'm I'm kind of okay with that. Uh, then what we have is we have the um, the additional settings. So in in the case of um, you know we can choose specifically what devices we want to show on. Uh, and again, I'll I'll kind of drill into that so you can see it. So if you wanted to set specific targeting for devices, you know you could choose you don't want to show for tablets or TV screens. Um, and then you could also choose which network. So in the case of this, I'm looking to, to obviously run this for the UK. So it'll only give me mobile networks in the UK. So if I wanted to show on everything like, you know, to do with Wi-Fi, UK app is sort of toggled is on. And they're, they're, if, in the absence of choosing, they're on by default. So because I haven't actually selected anything, then I will show for Wi-Fi and all of those networks. Um, then you have the frequency capping. So in the case of, um, you know, if you're running a campaign, you might want to, to have a kind of different sequence. In this case, you know, they're, they're suggesting that, that um, I, can't, I can't actually change this. Um, so, so it's basically one sequence per user per 30 days, right? So, you know, the, the maximum time that I could kind of have this for is 30 days and I could only show the sequence once. Now, um, if you wanted to kind of run day passing, this is where you could kind of choose which days to kind of run it for. Uh, again, I'm just going to be uncomfortable to have it running all the time. So now we get into the, the video ad sequence. So the idea behind it is that, you know, you can create a sequence of videos that, um, that basically tell a story. So in, in this case, I haven't got videos that tell the story. I'm just showing this more as the kind of an example. And really, it's kind of, um, you know, it's really almost like a in, in, in some sort of software, you'll see if then. Right. So if this happens, do this. If something else happens, do something else. So in the case of, um, you know, this particular sequence of videos, you know, you, you can have a maximum of four steps. So the, the, the most number of videos you can have in your sequence would be four. Um, and the idea behind it is depending on whether people have, um, you know, seen an impression, viewed or skipped the video will dictate what they what happens next for them. Right. So in this case, you can see here I created a, the, the kind of the first step. Right, which is one video number one. Right, so again, I've called it growth growth agency video one. Um, then, obviously, you know, the, the the next step would be if they skip the video. Right, what do you want to happen? So, in this case, I might say, well, I want to show them the same video again and hope that they see it. 
right? And it could be that at that point in time, if they if they skip it, I just kind of leave the, um, the, the the sequence at that point because clearly they're not interested. Or I might say, okay, well, if they skip the ad, maybe try and show them a different one. Um, and in the case of if they view the ad, right, what you can actually do is, okay, say, so fine, they've, they've viewed the ad. Uh, again, I'm, I'm trying to get some clarity on how much of the video they need to have viewed, right? I don't know if it's a percentage of the video. I think this particular video is like six, six minutes long, right? So it's like, have they viewed a certain percentage of it? Don't really know, but, you know, let me kind of click in and see. So um, you see if it actually says anything about it. Yeah, it doesn't. So so in respect of each video that you you, you kind of add in, you need to, to have them have the video on YouTube. So again, if, if they're not on video, YouTube already, you need to kind of get them ready to, to kind of upload. And then once you've uploaded them, then you can select them. Um, you can choose what type of video you, you're going to run. Um, so in the case of uh, this particular video, because it's a actually it's a 36 second video, not a six minute video. But if it was a longer video, then the only option you would have would be to, to run an in-stream ad. Um, and that basically is the ad where at the end of five seconds, people have the option to skip the ad. Um, then if you wanted to, you could have it as a bumper ad. And bumper ads are six seconds and, and um, they don't give people the option to skip the ad. So they, they basically have to see the ad. But the ad itself needs to be six seconds or less. Um, and there's some examples of, of some good sort of bumper ads that um, some brands have actually created. You know, you think six seconds isn't a particularly long time for people to be able to um, to tell a story. But, you know, certainly from the point of view of keeping a, keeping a journey going along, a bumper ad might be a good way to kind of jump in in step, step two or step three to kind of keep the the, um, the story going along. And then finally you have non-skippable ads. Um, so again, the, the, the non-skippable, they tend to be, um, you know, if it's if it's going to be, if it's six seconds or less, then YouTube suggests you, you run a bumper ad. Um, so really it's for videos between six and 15 seconds. So anyone that's run sort of ads on um, Instagram, you know, this is more sort of like your Instagram story type uh, format, so 15 seconds or less. Um, then you have an option of choosing which URL you want your people to actually click on the um, companion banner that will, will appear. So you can see underneath here, there's a there's actually a um, um, a companion banner. You can add a call to action if you choose to, um, and you can see that there's that blue blue button that will appear. So you might sort of put in something like learn more. Yeah, so that will change to learn more, um, and you can give it a headline. So again, it's like uh, growth agency help or something like that yeah but you, again you only have the option of 15 characters right which isn't that many so again you may just want to, to either leave it blank or entirely up to you but you can see here that's what that particular um you know in stream ad will look like um so yeah so you have obviously the, the kind of anyone that clicks on the learn more button or the growth agency link will be, get taken through to wherever the url is so again you may want to set up a dedicated landing page just for people coming through from this particular video. That's entirely up to you. You have that, that option. Um, one, again, one thing I would say is if, if your video doesn't have, um, you know, a kind of a decent channel banner, right? So you can see here, that this is the, um, you know, this is for, for desktops only. Um, so again, what, what I would suggest is if you, if you don't want YouTube to kind of create the, uh, the, 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 companion banner that goes with it, um, then you can actually upload an image. So if you wanted to, you could have, instead of having this particular bit here, you could actually upload your own image with your own call to action button, but that's, that's only for desktop. Um, and the, the only other thing I would suggest is that the tracking URLs are not that good on YouTube. I'll, I'll actually leave a link in the description below of the template that we use. Uh, but basically what we do is we actually use a tracking URL, tra tracking template, to ensure that the um, the clicks that we get through, we can recognize them in the right channel in Google Analytics. But uh, I haven't done that partic this particular exercise, but I'll leave it in the description below. So we click on done, um, and we can see then obviously if, the, if people skip on the ad, they get taken to the to the next step, which is that one. Yeah, um, so we can, we can obviously edit the step, um, you know, preview the ad, we, you know, we can do whatever we want to do. And then obviously if they view it, then, then you can have the next step there. And if they skip that one, then you can go, right, I want to do that one. Um, so you, you could in theory have like a fairly complex maze of, um, you know, what happens next based upon what they've actually done. Um, and again, I, th I think 
over time you'll probably start to see some pretty elaborate storytelling going on with youtube video because i think it's it's a it's a great platform for for doing that storytelling uh but you know but again i think a lot of it would probably be you know maybe grab a whiteboard um write it down and actually have the you know well if this happens this is the one i want to, to them to see next so if you kind of lay it lay it out on um you know, on paper, or maybe use something like Lucid Charts. I mean, Lucid Chart would be good for um, actually laying out this this type of format. And, and obviously, the, um, the the kind of the options that you have are view, skip, or um, impressions. So again, if I if I kind of click on this one, you can see here the next step is the step transition is you know based upon what they've done. So in this case, obviously, I can't actually choose impression because uh, there's already a step following the skip interaction, so I can't, I can't actually, um, you know, decide what that hap what happens there. And in this case, I can't actually do anything here. So all I can really do is if they view it, right, sort of take them somewhere else, right? So um, you know, it, it it gets sort of more limited the kind of further down the funnel you actually get. Um, but yeah, so if we if we kind of click on edit the step, you know, we can choose whether it's impression. So we can then say, right, okay, well, let's do that, you know, and that will then basically sort of take take that through. Um, and then from here, we can choose whether we want to do skip or view. Um, actually, we can't in that case. Anyway, you get you get the idea. Uh, and then obviously, once you've kind of you set up your sequence. Uh, you would just put your campaign live and, and run it in the, the way that you would normally run any campaign. So again, this, this is likely to run one sequence per user. And when you actually start running it, you will get some dedicated reports that will give you a kind of a breakdown of uh, the interactions with every video in the sequence that you've set up. Uh, and clearly you would have it, you know, in your YouTube campaign, you would have the data in your um, Google Ads campaign. Um, you would then also be able to have the data in Google Analytics, assuming that you've, you've got the tracking working properly. Um, and then obviously from there, you would be able to um, to kind of run more sophisticated um, remarketing campaigns based upon people that maybe have got to a certain point in the journey. I mean, I know that this is basically, we're taking people through an entire sort of journey. Um, so again, it could be that the, the kind of the, the first video is all about awareness, uh, the second video is all about engagement, and the third video is all about conversion. Um, so if they've seen one and two but haven't kind of acted on three, you could basically say, right, I want to create a remarketing audience of people that have seen one, seen two, but haven't actually uh, done anything with three, uh, and maybe run search ads to it and to, to try and get people that you know have seen two videos in your sequence over the line. Um, so there we go, that's, that's kind of a quick walkthrough of the new YouTube ad sequence. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, and if you'd like to see more videos like this, then what I would suggest you do is uh, subscribe to the channel, click the uh, the bell, and then that way when I post any uh, follow-up videos to this one or, or other videos in, in similar topics, uh, then you'll get notification.